The video you're about to watch is from one of our spurt schools. Enjoy and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, we find ourselves standing before your throne. <clears throat> the spirits always in worship, always in adoration to who you are. Father, as we stand before you, my spirit man, with my soul, is so consumed with your glory, consumed with revelation and infused knowledge given to my spirit continually, daily, as I, as I am becoming more aware of who I am as a spirit being. And I remember and I remind those in front of me that as I stand before the throne, the Bible describes this as a place where there is 24 elders that sits by the throne. And Father, right now, everyone in this room, I ask it, that we will begin to engage with each one of these 27 elders, Father. I want you to look at number one, number two, number three carry on until you get to 24. Remind yourself that, that the first 12 represents Jerusalem, the second 12 represents Zion, and of course 12 always comes to the understanding of governance. So these 12 laws represented through the 12 elders establishes a governance over the law of, of, of Jerusalem. The same applies to the 24 or to the 12 that relates to Zion as 12 establishes the laws of Zion. And as we begin to understand what the Father wants to open up, the deeper, the higher, the wider we go into the worship and adoration at the throne. As the gates begin to open, as the, the ark form between number one and number 13 begin to open up the desire of the father is always for us to engage in deeper revelation so father tonight as holy spirit begins to lead as holy spirit begins to take over the the, the teaching father i ask you in the name of yeshua that you will open up our hearts to begin to understand that this is a revelation that comes through what we engage in the spirit we love you my king glorify and magnify you you are majestic you are exactly what we need you are beautiful and we glorify and magnify you my king amen how are you guys doing I went to uh, that lady that, that kind of does the body work massage. And she was working on my neck and my shoulder, my, my both my shoulders. So it's all crackling and falling and it's so weird. But I'm very excited for the next 24 weeks. We're going to be discussing the things that we've probably touched base on already, but it will be related to the 24 elders. So what I would urge you when you go into the spirit over the next couple of weeks is to engage and, and go into them. You know, it's not something we've ever focused on, but I have said this before, I, I, and I, wanna, I want you to understand this, that when I'm in the kingdom of heaven, the Father does not expect of me to only be around the throne. You know, when me and my wife, when we're together, we don't. <coughs> We don't have to talk the whole time. We don't have to physically be in front of each other the whole time to be with each other. Does that make sense? I mean, she's, she's at home right now, but in essence, we are together. Yes. And of course, when I'm in the kingdom of heaven, I'm in his domain. I'm in a realm, in a kingdom where there's no limitations. There's no time and there's no space. So I don't have to sit around his throne worshipping him the whole time. Matter of fact, that's not what he wants. And if you understand what I'm saying, that's not what the seven spirits do. That's not what the four living creatures does the whole time. That's not what all the angels do the whole time. There's a functioning body of activity that takes place all the time. So when I'm at the throne and I'm engaging into Yeshua, into the lover of my soul, when I'm engaging into the one that I love, I need you to understand I don't just have to worship Him in my perception of worship the whole time. Right. So the idea what we're going to be engaging is that I want you to go face to face 
with each of the 24 elders. And you know, for me in the beginning it was really strange because the Bible says nothing about the 24 elders. It explains to us that they, they would take the crowns and they lay it at the feet at the sea of glass. But that's about it. You know, there's not much said about them. There's not much said regarding what they do. Right. And then we begin to understand as we engage in the spirit that the Father wants to bring revelation regarding everything. Because everything that he created, everything that is in the kingdom of heaven right now is to propel you deeper into a more intimate relationship with him. Amen. So it talks about the 12 chancellor houses. 12 laws of Zion, 12 laws of Jerusalem. In Zechariah it says, in Zechariah 3 verse 7, If you walk in my ways, now I would like you to memorize this scripture, not in a, a, a ritualistic way, not to the way we do it, just so that you understand what the next 24 weeks are going to be about. Because this is what the Father wants us to understand. If you walk in my ways, and... Uh, if you will perform my services. Now this is the laws, uh, the, the, the um, ways the Father wants you to perceive. This is the ways the Father wants you to understand. He's not talking about the Ten Commandments. He's not talking about the laws that He gave to the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. All right. And I need you to understand that. And if you perform my services, then you will also govern my house and have charge of my courts, and I will grant you free access amongst those who are standing here. These two sets of principles enable you to walk in His ways. Apply my principles, and so rule my house, and govern my courts, and stand in my assemblies. It's His desire for us to understand what the 24 laws open up for us. Because in the revelation of it, all 24 of them, uh, his desire for you is to begin to govern the courts. His, his desire has always been and will always be for us to understand that we are co -ed and we are to be co ed with him. But how many of you understand it's not just going to happen? First of all, the church has no idea how to govern the kingdom of heaven. Main reason is because we have believed that we have to die to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. We have to physically die to go to heaven. But the reality is you just have to give your life to Jesus, step into Him, and go through the blood. Right? So I step into Him. Now the church has never done that. So the church has never had an understanding of what the kingdom of heaven is all about. Therefore we cannot govern what we don't know. Amen. And so the Father's desire for us is to begin to understand what's there for us to govern. And He wants us to rule and be chancellors in the courts. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to do the laws of Jerusalem. We're going to do the laws of Zion. Now the laws of, Jer the laws of Jerusalem is this. It is the law of the spirit of life. It is the law of sin and death. The law of love. The law of, of faith. The law of sowing and reaping. The law of firstborn. The law of first mention, the law of abundance, the law of justice, the law of righteousness, the law of judgment, the law of grace, and the law of mercy. Right. Now, I, I say 24 weeks, but it might be less. Um, it will not be more, but it could be, but it might not. But it might be less. Because some of these laws are not, not it's not able for me to preach an hour on it. All right. Because you know, there's, there's, there's less to it to some than to others. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that you understand the Father wants us to engage and understand that these laws are not laws like we perceive the Ten Commandments to be. It's not the same type of law that He laid down for the Egyptian, uh, for, the, for the Israelites when they came out of Egypt. And those laws were given to govern them because of what they perceived things to be, right? Mm -hmm. They had a new mindset and it was a mindset of slavery. So the laws were trying to get them out of slavery and allow them to do things that they are now no longer allowed to be associated with. All right. <coughs> These laws are not those type of laws. These laws are like the law of gravity. All right. 
So it's not a law that I have to apply in my life. It's a law that it's just there. Yeah. It's in that kingdom. How are you guys doing? And the law of Zion is the law of sacrifice, the law of harmony, the law of resident, resident, re resonance, sorry, uh, the law of time and space, the law of lordship, the law of kingship, the law of sonship, the law of creation, the law of legislation, the law of trading, law of wisdom, and the law of chancellorship. Wow. Now, as we start going through the laws of Jerusalem, we're going to quickly understand that we have touched base on some of these things. And of course, the Father's desire for us is to now just simply go to a deeper le a level, a deeper dimension of understanding regarding what it means to live according to the law of the spirit of life. Mm -hmm. right. So we're going to touch base on the law of the spirit of life tonight. And I want you to understand something. His desire for you has always been from the very beginning, when he slayed the lamb before the foundations of the earth, his desire for you was to be a spirit being. Amen. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And as much as we are being taught, and as much as we are being trained, uh, even have been over the last two years, the, the flesh will always want to play a role. The soul will always want to be in the midst. Yes. And we, of course, have to get our soul and our body to the place where it no longer subjects to what it used to run with or understand or perceive. And on Tuesday, I was trying to express an understanding the Lord gave me that He wants to sear all our understanding of sin. All right. He wants to remove all remembrance of it. Mm -hmm. That's why there's scriptures in the Bible that says, to the pure, all things are pure. Yes, Lord. That's why an angel can stay and will stay right next to me even when I'm in the, the highest degree of my sin. Mm -hmm. Because they have no record of sin. Mm -hmm. And of course the Father's desire for us is to have my spirit overshadow my soul and body to such an extent that all record of sin is removed. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And that's just one aspect because as the law of the spirit um, dictates that the spirit man is in Christ, Christ is in the Father and uh, that are consumed and covered by Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't make one to be more important than the other. But it does reflect and gives us the understanding that you can't have the one without the other. Yes, Lord. That's why if you look at the Old Testament, it would always, almost show us that it was just the Father. It was the, 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 the aggressive part of God. You know? <laughs> you know, you touch the ark, you die. It was, it was justice, judgment, and mercy. You know, then you look at, at Yeshua as in the start of the New Testament where he begins to come into the earth and, and his character comes out and he, he relates to the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. You know, we understand, well, this is how we need to live. This is the way that projects life to us. This is what we need to step into. You know, we understand and see the character of each entity of God. And then, of course, now we have Holy Spirit and it is a whole different ballgame. It is righteousness given to us through Christ. It is a joy and it's peace. Of course, the church hasn't seen much joy. Uh, many aspects of the church have seen joy, but we're always serious and we're always so religious that we are allowing the enemy to just steal what the Holy Spirit was meant to bring in. Because that's the skins we step into. But as you understand, as you begin to understand the spirit of the law of life, or this, the, the, the law of the spirit of life, you understand that Holy Spirit's desire is for me to step into Him. Now, if spirit steps into spirit, the possibility of change is inevitable. Yeah. And, and you know, the Father showed me something many years ago, and it was so, it was, it was a bad example. <laughs> I would have rather not have that example in my life, but it made so much sense. I remember driving in my car many years ago, and I was smoking a cigarette. <gasps> God spoke to you while you were smoking a cigarette. <laughs> I was smoking a cigarette, and um, I remember the, it was, it was a long time ago, and so it was the, the, the smoke of the cigarette that I had in my hand that came out of the cigarette, was blowing into the car, and 
the smoke that I blew out of my mouth. It's both smoke, but it was two different kinds of smokes, mm -hmm. if, if that makes sense. And it became, it just intertwined to such a m manner that it became one, and it changed both substances. It's a lot like the baptism that I talk about, the, the Oreo cookie and the milk. When you bring the two together, it creates a new substance. Mm -hmm. right. And I was just uh, explained to them, and his father just started explaining to me how he wants us to become one. Yeah. He wants my spirit to go into his spirit, and it will literally recreate and bring a different dimension of spirit into place. Mm -hmm. And of course, that has to overshadow my soul and my soulish way of thinking. It has to change the way I think. It has to change the way my body responds. Right. How my body responds to what my, my think patterns are. And so when I'm focused on my spirit, the idea behind it is that I no longer think the way I used to think. Yes. Yes. Because I remind you that in my, in, my, in my natural way of life, my way of thinking, um, my brain, and the thoughts that is produced in my brain is activated through my soul and the perception of what my soul has regarding the things that I've understood, the things I've walked in within the earth. For example, I'm a soulish being. Now, I'm not saying that if this is what you've experienced, that you're a soulish being. But if I, if I, if I have a headache, I take a headache tablet. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but it's soulish. Right? Because my soul has been trained and equipped to believe certain things. When you're in the earth, when you're living in this realm, and you have a headache, you take a headache tablet. When you get sick, you go to the doctor. Yeah. When you're thirsty, you drink water. When you're hungry, you eat food. Yeah. You know, when you're tired, you sleep. Mm -hmm. That's just uh, the, the natural understanding that my, my soul and my body has. It's the way I think. That's the way it will always be. Yeah. And if you look at the world, that's just how it is. The harder I work, the more money I earn. You know, the, the, the um, more money I have, the happier I'll be. You know, the more things I possess, the greater for my, for my, for my bloodline, for my family, and my inheritance will be greater. So it's our focus, it's what we look at. But that's soulish. Yeah. Right, because the focus is purely on what my soul and my, my, my body desires. It's what I was born into. Now that's fine, but the problem comes in when I'm born again and I still have the same mindset. Because when I get born again, when I'm born from above, the Father's desire for me is to begin to step into the law of the spirit of life. Now first of all, life in the Greek means Zoe, and it's a God type of life. Now, if I live a God type of life, I cannot be soulish. Mm -hmm. right. I cannot be fleshly, and I cannot think like the world does. Yes. Although God created the world, and of course God uh, subsided from the world because He gave the world to us, yeah. and His desire, of course He didn't step away and say, well, I have nothing to do with it. He's an, he's an uh, uh, active God in creation, and He loves us, and He wants us to bring everything into place. That's His desire, right? Amen. Yes. But we also need to understand he stepped out because he gave us dominion and authority. So as he's now standing on the side, he's not really standing on the side, he's in me, he's in, in the earth, he's doing all kinds of stuff. But his desire for us is to begin to walk in what he created us to walk in within the earth. Yes. And I can't touch it or have any dominion over it if I'm in the flesh and if I operate out of the soul. So when I get born again, my spirit and the idea behind it has always been that my spirit ignites and overshadows what my soul and my body desires and wants to do to such an extent that it begins to change the way I think. Amen. So I produce a thought in my soul All right. and then it activates that thought in my brain mm -hmm. that either affects my body or it comes out of my mouth. You guys understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the idea, of course, with a with a with a law of spirit life is that I produce a, th a thought in my spirit, yeah. and it goes through my heart. Yeah. yeah. And when it then comes out of my when, when that thought is then produced in my brain, it changes everything because that's what the Bible says. I think upon the things that is above. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And meditate on the things that's above, the, yeah. the beautiful, the, the powerful, the, beauty, the, the, the glory, the fullness of God. I, I, life, the, the fullness of life. Amen. And of course, his desire for me is to begin to think like that yeah. and to understand that I am a spirit being. Mm -hmm. When my spirit is aware of everything that takes place, my actions change. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Now, let's get to this, and I need you to understand. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life sets me free from the law of sin and death. Because the law of sin and death still has me bound to the idea of right and wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. But when I understand that my spirit, uh, in my spirit and through my spirit, all things are possible and all things are pure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because my spirit doesn't need to get holy. My spirit doesn't need to change. My spirit needs to regain the information it's lost in the time that it was in the earth. But my soul needs to be reinformed of the way it used to think and how it's supposed to think. Yeah, that's right. My body needs to realign itself uh, through Holy Spirit and through my spirit engaging into it because the way my body reacts to certain things is no longer acceptable. That's right. <laughs> the law of sin and death consists of our sinful nature in acting with the law of Moses, such, uh, such that we live in condemnation continually. But the idea and the desire of the Father is for us to step out of the fleshly realm and no longer look and operate as a soulish being, but to step into the Spirit and to understand that everything I do from this moment on takes place from a different perspective. It takes place out of a different realm. The law of the Spirit of life is the guidance of the Holy Spirit as He guides us, uh, the desire, uh, see, if He gives us the desires to live a holy life. See, the Spirit is holy. Yes. It is pure. It is absolutely set apart. It is the image and the fullness of Yeshua. And that's why I get born again. That's why when I get born again, all of a sudden, I want to try and stop sinning. I don't want to sleep around anymore. I don't want to do the things that I used to do. So there's yes. this battle. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the yes. more interactive I am in my spirit, the more time I spend in Yeshua, the more time I spend in the kingdom, the more it overshadows my soul and my body yes. so that I can produce a holy life. Yes. Holy life. Yes. Thank you. Because it gives me the desire to live holy. Yes. Wisdom concerning how to overcome the world. Yes. My spirit is... All knowing. All knowing. Yes. <laughs> now you need to understand something. My spirit is all knowing. Uh, my spirit is perfect. Uh, it's because through the blood of Yeshua, my spirit is revived. Amen. It's not because my spirit is special, although it is. But it's all done through Yeshua. Mm -hmm. So that veil is torn for my spirit man to go in. Now it's open for my soul and my body to go in as well, but that comes with growth and revelation. Mm -hmm. yeah. That comes with understanding the dimension of intimacy the Father wants me to walk in. But it's, 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 the idea behind this is that I begin to understand that wisdom, that He wants to give my, my being wisdom on how to overcome the world. Bodily passion and self-will. And the power to choose holiness in place of spiritual uncleanness. Yes, yes, yes. See, yes. when I live a spirit life, now I remember before I begin to walk in the kingdom of heaven, I had many works. You know, I woke up early in the morning because I was a personal trainer, so I started my day praying. It was just constantly praying. And I would do this for hours. I remember having to, to spend a certain amount of time reading the Word. It was just locked and sealed into me. It was works, works, works. And the more I do, the holier I would feel. Yeah. Okay, but that was soulish. Yeah. Because as soon as I began to enter into the kingdom of heaven, instead of spending half an hour frustrated trying to find uh, what to pray, how to pray, where to read, what to study in the Word, so that it can make me feel better, I would step into the kingdom of heaven and just communicate with my Father. Yeah. And just getting to know Him at a different level. Yes. When I get to know Him, it overshadows the knowledge I have of the Word. Ooh, yes, 
It overshadows it in such a degree that it brings new revelation, new insight. Yes. It overshadows the works that I was find, find myself in and begin to propel me into a place where I see the value of who I am and what he has created and destined for me to be. Amen. And it's awesome. The sins that bind us produces a passion to perform the sinful acts. So if the, the sin that binds me produces a passion to perform the sinful acts, then the um, spirit of Yeshua bound to me um, will create and realign me to have a desire to do things that is pure and set apart. So it's the engagement into the Spirit that opens up the Word, that opens up that intimacy with Yeshua, that enables me to go into the Father, that enables me to activate the gates and the doors um, within the Father that relates to the living letters, that opens up dimensions of revelation to me. It is his desire then, of course, for me to begin to walk and live and have my being within the kingdom of heaven to such an extent that everything I see, everything I touch, everything I feel within the kingdom of heaven become real and overshadows everything I see, touch and feel within the earth. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I love that. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. See, he wants us to begin to look at things from a different perspective. Yes. 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 Because although at the moment it's 99% soul and body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I mean I wake up in the morning and immediately you feel your body. I, I sleep on my shoulders so I wake up in the morning and I feel my shoulder sore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, my shoulder, was, uh, my, my shoulder gets sore. I almost started speaking Afrikaans there. <laughs> anyway. My words <laughs> here. My, my shoulder gets sore and then I wake up and I turn around to the other side yes. and then that shoulder is sore. So, yes. <laughs> so I realize when I wake up, I wake up in the flesh. Yeah. I realize immediately that I have a body that's broken that yeah. needs healing. Uh -huh. yeah. And that carries in through the day. You know, I have a specific way of thinking mm. that I realize it's not always godly. All right. Not in the manner that he wants it to be. But there's mornings that I wake up, and as I wake up, I wake up in the morning and I'm consumed with His Spirit. Mm -hmm. It depends on how I went to sleep, it depends on what I was doing in the time that I was in the night watch. Right. Right. I wake up and I can feel my spirit is overshadowed my body. My shoulders are not sore, my body, I don't feel the, the aches and pains. Now I need you to understand that I, my aches and pains are self-inflicted. Okay, I train in the gym every day of my life, so I wake up on a Monday, and on a Tuesday I wake up and my chest is sore. On a Wednesday I wake up and my lats are sore. And on a Thursday I wake up and my legs are sore. <laughs> so my muscles are sore because that's what I do. I train it the previous day, so it's, it's on, on purpose. But, so don't, don't think that I'm sick and dying, I'm not. You know, my shoulders, it's, it's, it's not constantly sore. I believe that I have the ability, because of this law, to overshadow the physical with the spiritual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, first understand that the spiritual has to become real enough to actually overshadow the, the soul and the body. Because at the moment, most of our soul and body is more real than the spirit. Yeah. Because our sight in the spirit is less than what it is in the natural. I see more in the natural than what I see in the spirit. What I see in the natural, I understand, I perceive, I know. No one needs to tell me through the interpretation of some word that that's a chair. Mm -hmm. I've known all my life that that's a chair. Matter of fact, if I, know, if I walk around this floor, I can tell you that this is tiles, and it's not real tiles. I don't know what it's made of. I think that it's made of plastic. Yeah. Not because someone taught me, because I've seen it. Yeah. Then I can go and I can knock on that door and tell you that it's not solid wood. Yeah. Not because someone told me, because it's logic. My soul knows. Yeah. And I can go outside and I can tell you the grass is green. But in reality, who's, who says green is that color? Mm -hmm. It's just how we were taught. Yeah. We realize that it's, it's grass. Right. And uh, we understand that I'm now going to get into my car. And it's a, a metal box that has an engine that can take me to places with rubber wheels on it. Mm -hmm. you know, I understand that because I, was, I grew up in it. 
I grew up, when I walked out, my mom would say, get in the car, we're going to go take you to school. Mm -hmm. So it's something that I understood all my life. Now, all of a sudden, there's a spirit being in me that needs to learn the same things. (laughs) Because it has been been stopped, it has been uh, held back for so many years. Now, my spirit goes into the kingdom of heaven and says, I remember that because I was there before time was time. But how does it work? What is it? And then, of course, my spirit has to relate that to my soul. And my soul says, well, I understand that chair, but I don't understand the seat of rest. I understand that as to be a, a chair where I sit on, but you say there's a mercy seat. You say that there is a throne, and I can sit on that throne. I understand a mountain because I've climbed many mountains in my life more like hills, but you say, I have my own mountain and I go into it. See, there's a, a dimension of revelation in the spirit that doesn't, doesn't co-air with what I know as a soulish being and perceives and understand in the natural. All right. mm-hmm. So there has to be a change of understanding, a change of perception, a change of the way I think has to take place for the law, this law of the spirit life or the life of the spirit to overshadow for it to begin to activate. Because once my spirit overshadows the way my soul perceives and thinks, then everything changes. Because then my spirit, uh, my soul would start going into the kingdom of heaven with my soul, with my spirit, <coughs> and begin to <coughs> see and understand the things I walk in and perceive at a whole different level. All right. And of course, that's the Father's desire. That my spirit... In, in, its, in its activity in the night watch, in its activity during the day, just spending time face to face, uh, walking with the seven spirits, engaging and walking in Eden, spending intimate time with the different entities of the fullness of the Father, <coughs> spending time with the Trinity, understanding the angelic canopy, uh, walking in the courts and knowing those laws, knowing uh, as a chancellor within the courts what you do, understanding the different courts. That is then related to my, my soul, and it becomes a real a reality. All right. Now, I have to remind you, for me, it's been six years. When I was six years old in the natural, now, I say in the natural, I, I wasn't born, and now my spirit has to grow. Mm-hmm. No. Right? My spirit has to try and relate to my, I would go as far as to say, idiot soul, yeah. what it's really doing. But those two just do not cohere. They don't go naturally together. Right. You know, it's like, I'm going to try and like it onto something. It's like the Egyptians and the Israelites. All right. The Egyptians overshadowed the Israelites and enforced them to do certain things all their lives. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then they set free and now they have to operate outside of that which oppressed them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they struggled. Matter of fact, so much so, they, were, they just left Egypt. They were set free by this awesome God. He opens up the Red Sea for them. And what do they do? They create a golden calf to worship. Uh-huh. Yet Moses, no, this, is, this is not natural. They just saw a mountain lift up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't know who's ever seen that. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I haven't even seen it in my imagination. You know, I can't even fathom a mountain. An entire mountain lifts up with Moses on it, then Moses go in it, he spends, he disappears for 40 days. Yeah, yeah. In that 40 days, these ah, idiots go and design and create a golden calf to worship. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yet they are set free. They're no longer suppressed over that which the, is, of the, 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 the Egyptians bring them and, and force them to do. Yeah. But they were so conditioned by the Egyptians that they think this is normal. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Come on. <laughs> so now Moses comes back and he's like, are you joking me? Now remember, he's been out of that suppression and of course it wasn't the same for him. No. He was the one that, that applied the pressure. Mm-hmm. That's right. And so he steps out of it now. It's been 40 years and in the 40 years of him being a shepherd, he got to know Yahweh. He got to know the freedom, he got to understand, and he got to look from the outside in and see how it was meant to be, or how it was and how it was also meant to be. Then he goes in and he brings them out, and they just have to go through the process. 
Amen. Because every now and then they find themselves wanting to go back. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, we're eating manna every single day. Yeah. We, have to, we have to catch these birds because they, their birds can only fly very low. I don't know, the Bible tells us it was ravens. But, yeah, it wasn't more than ravens, right? It was queers. Queers, oh my God, that sounds terrible. Uh, but no, it wasn't queers. Quails. In Afrikaans, it's a quartal. It's a small little bird that can only, it's like, it flies like a chicken. So it was easy for them to catch. But then they'd go and say, you know, we're just sick of this. I mean, in, in the place where we were suppressed, where if you burp, fart or sneeze, you die, yeah. we would rather go back there because they fed us meat. Oh, yeah. Just meat that was sacrificed to some ungod-forsaken demon. Yeah. Mm. But that's what we want to go back to. Yes. <laughs> now we need to understand, that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at as, okay. as the ecclesia. Yes. You know, we, we look at the way we worship today, and it's really just the way we used to go and uh, party in the nightclubs and in the live shows. No, it's not, there's nothing wrong with the way we do it, but it's the, the, the mentality. Come on, come on. The Father set us free from a, a life of complete sl slavery, the religion, but now we just want to constantly go back to what we know. Because we perceive everything through that soul. Yes. Instead of stepping into the spirit and activating that spirit man to such an extent that it overshadows. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Because that's the idea. It has to overshadow. That's what happened to Moses. He overshadowed yes. the Egyptian nation. He overshadowed them through the intimacy he had with the father. I mean, his intimacy was so intense that when the father said, I want to smite them, he said, repent. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Moses told God to repent. Do you know, guys know that? Mm -hmm. And not just that. Moses then turns his back on God. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. There was a dimension of intimacy that we don't understand. Yes. In those 40 days, that's what they did. They spent time together. Yes. Because he comes back and his spirit has overshadowed that lifestyle. He's yes. now a spirit being. Yes. And he has the knowledge and he has the insight of what heaven should be like. And he wants to legislate that into a, into a people. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Because he understood the law of the Spirit. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because he's no longer a mere man. That's why when he's, he now, he looks at these people and he's like, Oh, 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 oh. oh you suck. Big time, boys. I understand you've been in slavery for 400 years. But seriously, you cannot continue to think like this and have all the gray hair. I am bold because I pull that hair out. I can't stand it. He gets so frustrated that he eventually does something that kind of just sets him apart. And the father says, dude, uh -uh. they're going to go in. You're not going to go in. Yeah. And we think, oh, that's it. That's the unpardonable sin. Mm -hmm. right? But then Moses dies. Yeah. And uh, he, reminds, he reminds God. He says, excuse me buddy, my best friend, mm -hmm. I want my body to be in heaven. Mm -hmm. It's never happened with anyone else. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen with David. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen with Elisha. Mm -hmm. That's right. It only happened with, with Moses. Mm -hmm. You guys understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then so much so that Moses gets to be on the Mount of Transfiguration with Yeshua and Joshua, uh, uh, with, yeah, with Jesus and, 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 and Yeshua, what's his name? Elijah. Elijah. Elijah, yeah. Jesus. Can, we, uh, can you imagine? What was he doing there? He died. Yeah. Yeah. His physical body wasn't supposed to be there. If you look at the people that was there, it was people that hadn't died. Jesus wasn't dead yet. Elijah didn't die. He was taken up with his body. So his body was taken into the heavens. Moses died and was buried. Uh -huh. yeah. But then there was a fight in the heavens for his body. Yeah. Why? Because he was a spirit being that had a dimension of intimacy with the Father. He lived according to this law. There's no limitations in this law. Mm -hmm. 
because the spirit lives beyond time and space. It looks from a, a world that has no limitations and it wants to reflect that world into the soul and body. The soul only perceives small natural things, but the spirit has to be the one that sees everything above what my soul perceives. So the idea is eventually, and this is what the Father, I believe, has for this for this. Uh, um, time and season for us as we become the signs and wonders because yeah. you have to activate your spirit by having constant sight yeah. that's why you have to be constantly aware of my spirit more than I am about my soul because yes I wake up in the morning and I've got aches in my body yeah. and it reminds me that I'm flesh yeah. but I have to overshadow that thought with my spirit yes. Thank you. Yes. and I've done this many times and I would urge you to start doing it um, I overshadow my body and my soul with my spirit to bring healing. Yes. Right. To bring healing to the way I think. Yes. Yeah. And to bring healing to my physical body. Yes, Lord. Because in your spirit is a ball of fire. Mm -hmm. It's the fullness of the presence of Yahweh. It is that time spent in Him. And Him being over you, His breath that consumes you. That comes in and it overshadows my soul and my body. To bring healing. That's why I can come with my spirit into the earth and realign a nation. Thank you. Thank you. But in the same breath, I'll share a testament and I've shared it before. But a bunch of kids go to one of Ian Clayton's conference. Mm -hmm. He teaches them about the spirit and the power of being a spirit being. Mm -hmm. And on the way there, they, they stop. Oh, they're about to go without gas. And they forgot because they were so excited. So they didn't put gas in. And there's many miles in between gas stations. The lady that drives the van says, guys, we have a problem. We are too far to go back, and we are not going to make it to the next gas station. And we're going to run out of gas. You need to start praying. So this little guy sits in the back, and he takes his spirit man, because now you're spirit aware. I'm no longer a soul with a body. I'm a spirit that has a soul and a body. My spirit gets out of his body, his spirit goes to the gas station, puts gas in. I don't, I don't understand. He puts what? Spiritual gas in? With a spiritual credit card, he walks back with his spirit while the car's driving, put the gas into the car. He does that twice because in his spirit, he didn't bring a big enough canister. I don't know. I don't know how that stuff works. I haven't done that yet. So he walks back, does the same thing. And all of a sudden, the lady says, I don't know what happened, guys, but the gas jumped up a quarter of a tank. That's $20 of gas. As far as I could understand the testimony. Then he tells them what he did, and everybody, of course, thinks, okay, the guy is sitting on the cuckoo train. Mm -hmm. yeah. A week later, he gets his credit card invoice that shows two transactions made on that night in separate times. And he shows it to them as a testimony. All right. Because the spirit wants to overshadow. See, my spirit and the activity that my spirit has must become so real. And sometimes, and I guess it's kind of the same thing, but sometimes I will find myself in my nation in the spirit. And it is so real. Because I, my spirit has an understanding of that nation. I've been there all my life. I know what, what my uh, mother-in-law's house looked like. I know what some of my friends and my family members' house looked like. I know what my sister's house looked like. I know where they will be at a certain time in the house. I understand that. So my spirit goes there and I overshadow them. I love on them. I pray over them. I spend time in my nation as a spirit being. And it's becoming more real every time. All right. See, we don't always have to be aware of what's happening. But the Father's desire, of course, is for me to always be spiritually aware of everything I do. Spiritually aware. That's because that changes the way I think. That changes the way I align this law to my life. It's all about being a spirit, being an understanding that it has to overshadow my, my physical actions, my physical ways, the way I think, the way I perceive things. My spirit wants to completely and utterly take that into a whole new height. Yeah, Let's stand. How are you guys doing? Great. Does that make any sense? So, Father, as we, the Ecclesia, begin to understand this law, just the understanding of the overshadowing of my soul and my body with my spirit, understanding that through Christ and my spirit going into Christ, getting the opportunity to get back to its original state, where I am completely, fully engaged into the heavens 
as a spirit and that heavens begin to open up to such an extent that my soul begins to see it, my body begins to react to it, my spirit is constantly pouring into my soul and my body so that it becomes a life, so that it becomes the fullness of life, so it becomes that which it's meant to be. So I begin to legislate the heavens into my body, I begin to legislate the heavens into my soul, I begin to le uh, legislate the heavens into everywhere I go to bring the fullness of that spirit life into place. Yes. I ask, Father, we will give us revelation regarding it. You will open up the heavens for everyone in this room. Begin yes. to walk, yes. perceive, stand deep in the things that you've made available. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, thank awesome you. and majestic King. Amen. Amen. Amen.